Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 463 episodes made, broadcast on CBS Radio from 1942 to 1955, we bring to you The Whistler. Signal Gasoline. Let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with Signal Gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with Signal. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood Signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, Highway of Escape. I am the Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the heart of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Frances Block was never meant for the desert, but fate put her there. Set her down solidly in the center of an expanse of creosote brush and Joshua trees, cactus and hot dry sand at a scrubby little group of nondescript shacks huddled in the shade of a few scraggly umbrella trees. Known to the truck drivers passing through on Highway 441 as the Duncan Wells Tourist Camp. Just Frances and Pete Crawford, her stepfather. For her, it was a prison. For him, it was a living and the only one he knew. It was on a particularly hot day in July that she decided she couldn't stand it any longer... On a Sunday morning when the temperature stood at 90 degrees at 8 o'clock. Francis knew there was always more money than usual in the cash register on Sunday morning. 5, 10, 11, 50, 12, 25, 50, 85, 12, 85. Oh. Morning. Oh, uh, hello. You open for business? Uh, not yet. Kind of early. Hmm, not even gasoline? The pump's locked. Hmm. How far is the next town? 17 miles. The Warrell. Okay, I can make it, I guess. Hmm? Thanks a lot. You better get going. Um, just a second. Yeah? You, uh, going through to... I mean, uh... Los Angeles, yeah. Do there by noon. Can you take me? Huh? I've got to get out of here this morning. Right now. Oh, come on. You could take me if you wanted to, couldn't you? No, well, I'd like to, but... Oh, please. Look, I'll give you five dollars. Yeah, sorry, sister. There's company rules. No riders. I'd lose my job. Oh, they'll never know. Look, mister, you don't know what it means. It's life and death. Yeah? Yeah. It's life and death. Death if I stay here in this... this, this prison. Ah. I can't take it any longer, you see? You've got to take me away. You've got to. Hey, what's the matter? You sick or something? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sick. Look, look, I'll make it ten dollars. Ten dollars to Los Angeles. Yeah, but... That leaves me only, uh, two eighty-five. My bag's right there. It's all packed. I won't tell the company. They'll hey. never know. See? Just you and me will know, and I'll get off in Los Angeles. Well, for ten bucks, you can take the train. Oh, no, there's no trains here. Just trucks. Guys like you. There's a train from the next town, ain't there? Yeah. Yeah, how about that? You can take me to the next town. That's all. Just from the next town. Well, uh, I don't know. I... Good morning, Francis. Oh, there's a little lady here uh, wants to ride into town with me. Sorry, mister. She's made a mistake. I have not. I'm going, you hear? No, Francis. You're not going. You can't stop me, Pete. You can't stop me. I'm not going to stay here. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Well, uh, look, uh, mister, maybe uh, maybe you two better talk this over. I, I just thought I'd run into so wild, but then... She gets this away ever so often. She'll get over it. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll see you on the way back, maybe. Huh? Yeah. So long. Uh, so long. You 
did it again, you filthy... No, 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 there, Francis. I know how you feel, gal. This ain't no place for a young filly like you. But can't you see? There ain't nothing else I can do. Ever since your ma died, you I... You killed her. That's what you did. Francis, that's an awful thing to say. Just the same as if you shot her with a gun. Bringing her off to this godforsaken hole. Making her work when it was so hot she couldn't breathe. Well, you're not doing it to me, do you hear? Now, wait a minute. You ain't talking to me like that. Oh, no. Well, listen, you dirty, desert rat. I've had all of you I'm going to take, and I'm getting out of here today. This morning. In five minutes if a car comes. You're still my stepdaughter, Francis. Until you're 21, I'm afeard I'm doing the deciding. Oh, now, come on. You just trot on back to the cabin and lay down for a while. You'll feel better in no time. Get away from me. You'll understand about your ma someday. I know this place ain't much of a spread, but it was ours. And we built it together. Come on. I said get away from me. Please, Francis, just this once. For me. All right, Pete. Hey, wait a minute now. Put that knife down, Francis. You ain't in no condition to... All right. You ask for it. <laughs> Friends, have you picked up your free federal use stamp protector yet at your signal gasoline dealers? The deadline has already passed, you know, for getting your new use stamp on your windshield. And since that little stamp has to hang on your windshield for a whole year, you'll naturally want to protect it from moisture or scuffing so it won't peel off. That's why Signal Oil Company had these little use stamp protectors made up for you. They're smart-looking, transparent, and water-resistant so you can wash right over them without affecting your use stamp. And, of course, they're free. One of the little extra services your signal dealer offers to keep your car looking its best. Unfortunately, like all things in wartime, the supply is limited this year. Since every car will be needing one, I'd suggest that you get yours without delay tomorrow, if possible. Just drive into any of the friendly stations displaying signals, yellow and black circle sign, and say, I'd like one of the use stamp protectors that was offered free on the Whistler. And now, back to the Whistler. He's dead, Francis. It's over, and you're free now. You stare at him for a moment as he lies there on the floor in the middle of the small lunchroom, very still. For the first time in your life, you notice he has a kind face, a peaceful face. No look of fear on it. Just peace, deep, enduring peace. Yes, you're free now. You can leave any time you want to. Today, this morning, the next five minutes, if a car comes... You jump as a car pulls up out in front. Quickly, Francis. Move the body behind the counter before the driver comes in. That's it. Now take it easy. Just relax. He mustn't know. Hi, beautiful. How about a cup of java? Hey, what's the matter? Oh, nothing. Uh, coffee isn't made yet. Huh. A uh, cigarette? It's scarce these days. Uh, no. <sighs> well? What? Are you going to make it or shall I? Make what? A coffee. Say, are you sure nothing's the matter? Okay, something's the matter. I'm, I'm scared of my stepfather. Huh? He, he's horrible. I live here alone with him. I can't stand it anymore. That's too bad. Oh, please. Please take me with you to Saguaro anyway. I won't be any trouble. Oh, now, now wait a minute. Hold everything there. Now, now, now take it easy. Where is your stepfather? He's, he's asleep in his cabin. He's drunk. He'll wake up. Yeah, I, I, I see. Uh, you, uh, you got any money? Twelve dollars. But I can work once I get to a big town. Oh, I don't know. Oh, please. Please. 
I've been driving all night. I was going to grab a little shut eye here for a no, few I hours. I gotta go now. He he might wake up and he might. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. Well, okay, come on. You know, after what you told me about that stepfather of yours, I got half a mind to go back and punch him in his nose. He's got no hold on you. What does he think he is? Hey, listen. Let's do this thing right. Go back there and tell him right off. No, we can't. I'd like to anyway. I suppose it wouldn't do any good, only make trouble for you. Beats me, though, how any man can treat a gal as nice as you like that. You, uh, you are pretty, you know. Thanks. Hal. My name's Hal. All right, Hal. What's yours? Francis. Well, Francis, huh? Nice name. Uh, you hear that? What? The motor. Betsy doesn't like this heat any more than we do. How far are you going, Francis? Los Angeles. Yeah, it's a nice town. And we could have a lot of fun there. We? Yeah, hey, you and me. I uh, wasn't going that far. You but... might change your mind, huh? I don't know, maybe. Los Angeles is a nice town, isn't it? Come on over. Oh. <laughs> there, that's better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Los Angeles is a great place. You know, I can get a couple of days off and... Uh-oh. What's that? Betsy means it this time. Hey, what was it, uh, 17 miles of Saguaro from that camp? Yeah, but... Yeah, we've come five, shorter to go back. I gotta get to a phone. Oh, no. No, now, you look, can't. Francis, don't worry about him. I'll be ready for him. No, but I can't go back. I'll, I'll walk. Now, you do nothing of the kind. Look, baby. All you need is someone to take care of you. And from now on, I'm the guy. You can't. Why can't I? Let me out. Told you to let me out. I don't want you to handle it. Stop the car. Stop it. Get hold of yourself, baby. Don't you trust me? No. I mean, yes, but... What about Los Angeles, John? Forget it's not. It's not you, I said. It's not you. Just don't ask me anymore. Stop That's the car. That's all I want to know. Just sit tight and let me handle everything. We made it. Now, where's the phone? On the wall by the door. Yeah. Now, what you gonna do, sit there? Yeah, I'll wait. I'll be sure you do. What do you mean? Eh, nothing. I guess I got the jumps, too. And don't worry about him. If he comes out, just let out a yell, and I'll be here in a second. Smile. <laughs> yeah, <it's> better. <laughs> you know, baby, I kind of like you. Keep that chin up. Yes, Francis, keep your chin up. You could use a little courage now, couldn't you? There's a chance he won't look behind the counter, just a bare chance. But if he does, there you are in a stalled automobile 20 miles from nowhere and not a car in sight. But wait a minute. Around the curve, a car. Hurry, Francis, you've got to stop it. Wait! Wait! What is it? What's the matter? Take me to the next town. Hurry! Well, what's the matter? Uh, my uncle. It's my uncle. Something wrong? Yeah, yeah, he's hurt. Quick, I've got to get a doctor. Well, you're a mighty lucky young lady. I happen to be a doctor myself. Where is he? Oh, no! No, no, it's bad. It's, it's horrible. I don't want uh, you to... Now, you see... just let me decide that. Uh, here, I got my case. You take me to him. He... He's in the lunchroom. I, I'd better wait here. Yes, yes, I understand. You just relax now, and I'll take a look. It might not be as bad as you think. Just wait there in my car. Don't stand there like that, Francis. Do something. The car, his car. That's right. Hurry up. Faster, 60, 70. Keep your eye on the center line, wavering like a snake between the wheels. Twelve miles now between you and the camp. Five miles to Sawaro. Seventy-five. 
80. Almost lost it on that turn. The accelerator's down to the floor. Faster. Go on, grab the wheel. It's getting away from you. Open your eyes, Francis. You can move. Open your eyes and crawl out of the car. You're okay. I'm okay. Let it get off the road. Yeah. Take off cross country. I'll be watching. Watching the road. Cross country. down. Goodness sakes alive, a body can't hear himself think around here. Oh, oh, sorry, Matty. I don't know why in the world you keep that thing banging away night and day. Well, it's the dead blasted tubes. It gets louder and softer all of a sudden. Fella from Sarawa coming up to fix her. Oh, I ain't seen him. I should be here this afternoon. Think I'll go out and take a look around. Jake Watson, you stay right in that chair. You've been a mighty sick man. Hey, Matty, Matty, look. What? They're coming up the walk. Well, where could Tia come from? Hey, she's sick. She almost fell. Uh, well, Dad, blast it, do something. Well, you stay right there. What's the matter, honey? Uh, I don't know. Oh, there now. Just take hold of my arm. Thanks. Ma, you look all tuckered out. Come in. Thanks. Now, don't talk. We'll just get you out of this hot sun. Uh. Wouldn't surprise me none to find you was in my sunstruck. No hat and all. Land sakes, whatever you doing walking around out here? Now, hush yourself, Jay. Can't you see the poor thing can't hardly walk? Let alone listening to you jabber. Now, there, now, you sit down there, and I'll get you a nice cool drink of milk. <clears throat> you been walking far, miss? Yeah. Any particular reason? Yeah. I cracked up my car. Any more questions? No, no, I just thought it might be peculiar you picked this time of day to go walking. I'm sorry. Now, Jake, suppose you quit jabbering and let the poor girl rest a spell. She's about done in. Yeah, she's been in an accident. Car went off the road. Well, I declare. Ain't hurt none, are you? No. Just tired. Well, here, you just lean back and take a good drink of milk. You'll feel better in a jiffy. <laughs> There go them tubes again. Oh, turn it off. Yeah. yeah. Attention, please. Be on the lookout for a young woman in blue slacks and a yellow jacket, probably driving a Buick sedan, license number 8X43H7. About five feet, four inches tall, blonde hair, name Francis Block. Wanted in connection with the murder of Peter Crawford this morning at Duncan Wells. Lancy. Repeat. Hey, Attention. hey, that's you. Get out of my way. Oh. Look out, Jake. She might have a gun. Hey, wait a minute, young lady. Let go of me. Hey, Maddie. Maddie. Four, she, she's gone. Oh, here. Here, let me help you off. Her? No. That's what we get for being good Christians. Hey, turn the radio off. Huh. A murderess. I knew there was something slick about that girl. Well, that's all right. She won't get fur in this heat. Not in the desert. It's hot, unbearably hot, 110 in the shade. You can't keep going much longer, Francis. Feet swollen and blistered, bruises that ache with every step you take. Three in the afternoon. You've been walking two hours since you left the farmhouse. 120 blazing minutes. Your head is full of sun, the flat horizon wavers, dust in your nose and throat. You've got to have water. Water from the clear, sparkling fountain in the square of Wilkins Corners, the little town ahead. You've got to take a chance. Maybe they haven't heard about you here in Wilkins Corners, Francis. Maybe they don't listen to their radios. Look at that sign down the street. Coffee, hamburgers. Take a chance. You may not get another one for a long time. Morning, miss. Uh, like something to eat. Well, come to the right place. 
Hamburgers, hot dogs, barbecues, whole wheat, white, rye, apple, peach, boysenberry, cherry, lemon meringue, coffee, milk, and coke. Hamburger and white coffee. Hamburger. Hamburger. <laughs> Mustard, ketchup, or tomato sauce. Ketchup. Mm. Be right up. Pre-war service now. <laughs> We've reconverted. <laughs> oh, hi, Billy. What you doing down at Suaro? Oh, mighty busy today. Barbecue and whole wheat and coffee. Special. Special. What you mean, busy? Why, I don't mean to tell me you ain't heard about the killing. Huh? What killing? Well, sure. Found a man stabbed to death at Duncan Wells Tourist Camp. Yeah? Yeah, a guy who runs it named uh, Pete Crawford. No. Yeah, dead on a mackerel. Then the killer got away, they say. Sheriff's got posse out. Well, I'll be... Hey, late. You hear that? What? I killed it over to Duncan Wells this morning. Pete Crawford. You don't say? Yeah. You get your killer? Nope. You better watch out. Might be serving him a meal long about now. <laughs> Mm, stabbed, was he? Yeah, with a bread knife. Yeah. Doc Lawton was coming down from Cactus Garden. Uh, he claims he talked with the killer. Well, why'd he nail him? Oh, you know Doc, but scared of his own shadow. That's too bad. Yeah, it is. They say old Pete Crawford didn't have an enemy in the world. I mean, it's too bad Doc didn't do something. Oh. You know, the best time to nab a murderer is right after he's done his job. It surprised me none to see this thing end up as well, another one of Sheriff Bradshaw's famous unsolved mysteries. Oh, well, I don't know. You know. Murder's a funny thing. Ain't like going down to the feed store for a sack of barley. Takes planning, yeah. thinking. There's a thousand ways a killer can trip himself up. Yeah. Just one false step along the way and it's all over. Yeah, well, maybe so. You know, I'd like to see that killer right now. <laughs> Probably pacing the floor somewhere, wondering if there was a slip-up. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be in old Doc Lawton's shoes, yeah. being the only witness. <laughs> Bet you the old boy's looking six ways before he leaves his house. Here you are, George. One hamburger. Yeah. Oh, there you are, miss. Hamburger on white, and I'll go get your... Co- hey. Well, what's the matter? How where do you suppose she went? You forgot your hunger in a hurry, didn't you, Francis? A half minute more in that restaurant and it would have been all over. You're tired, worn out, but you can still think. A thousand ways you can trip up, make a false step, that's what he said. But you'll show them, won't you, Francis? First, get out of town and keep off the highways. Remember the sheriff's posse. The railroad, that's it. All the freight trains have to stop at that water tower a half mile out of town. Cross country again. Through the brush, under that blazing sun, keep away from the road. Then finally, the cool shade of the water tower with the drops splashing into a puddle there in the shade. You sit down and rest. Let your eyes close. Then... Someone's coming. Look, there's a piece of iron pipe in the corner. Remember where it is. Oh, beautiful. Hell. Thought you'd be here. You almost gave me the slip back there. What do you want? Gave you quite a run, didn't they? Hey, well, mind if I sit down? I got some talking to do. Mm. Yeah, it's better. <clears throat> nice and cool here. You know, maybe I'm a sucker, but I still think you're pretty nice. Beautiful but dumb. Do you think you could get away with it? I don't know. I'm so tired. Yeah, I know you're tired, baby. Probably a little loony with the heat, too. No one in his right mind would have done what Shut you... Shut up! Did. You don't have to rub it in. Now, listen to me. I can help you, see. I'm the only one that can help you get out of this. You haven't got a chance to let you play ball, understand? Help me. You! <laughs> Ow! Sorry, baby. Maybe you'll listen to me. All right, Al. I'll listen to you. There's a way out of this. It's a short chance, but you'll have to take it. Wait a minute. Here comes the train. Get back there. I'm afraid it'll have to stop. Then let me take a look. The pipe. If I can... No. I can't tell yet. Wait a minute. Yep, yep, it's a freight off. So you were going to help me, were you? You didn't fool me. That's one mistake I didn't make. Yes, Francis, you were careful. 
You could see through his offer to help, couldn't you? Now, no slips, Francis, no false steps. The train is stopped for water. You hide, trembling behind the shack at the water tower. Then as the train starts up, you grab the rung of the ladder on a passing car, up the side. Now across the top and down the side before anyone sees you. But wait. There's a guard on top moving toward you. Down the tops of the cars. Don't look back. Watch where you're going. No false steps, Francis. No false steps now. <laughs> The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, a word about today's pre-war bargain in gasoline mileage that's helping more and more wise Western drivers stretch their ration gas stamps. I'm talking about the good pre-war mileage you still get in Signal Go Farther Gasoline. Yes, it's true. You still go as far as before the war with Signal. And I'll tell you why. You see, the gasoline ingredients which you've heard are reserved for war are the very volatile, highest-octane components, such as isopentane. That's why Signal Oil Company frankly admits no gasoline today can give you all the pep and anti-knock performance you found in pre-war Signal gasoline, and which you'll enjoy again in even further improved Signal post-war gasoline. But when it comes to mileage, that's where Signal gasoline still shines. For today's signal formula still contains not only all the high-energy components that gave pre-war signal gasoline its superior mileage, but also new high-mileage hydrocarbons have been added. You can prove this for yourself by keeping track of your mileage. You'll find it's as true today as before the war. You do go farther with signal gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. No false steps, Francis. That's what the man said. And you are going to be so careful. But then how could you tell what kind of a false step it might be? And now it's all over, and everyone knows the answer to the killing of your stepfather. Well, it's all cleaned up now. Found the murderer dead right there between the railroad tracks. Terrible thing, terrible. Of course, without the doctor's testimony, they might never have known how it happened. The doctor? Sure, sure, according to the radio. Doctor says he went into the lunchroom and found that fellow leaning over Pete Crawford with a knife in his hand. Boy, the doc practically witnessed the murder. Then the girl didn't do it. Oh, I knew she was innocent, the poor little thing. Yep, yep, she was innocent, all right. They figured the murderer was going to try to shut her up, too. That's why she had to defend herself with that piece of light lead pipe there. Doggone it, he was already wanted in New Orleans for killing ten days ago. Terrible thing, terrible. Only one thing I can't figure. What's that? Well, after she got the murder like she did, what do you suppose she was running away from? Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program directed by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Eleanor Beeson, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking and suggesting that you let every traffic signal remind you that you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther 
with Signal. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.